What's up? I'm Danimal, and I've been designing kitchen gadgets for more than 40 years. Why am I dressed like this today? I'm gonna to be giving you the 411 on gadgets designed in the 90s and see if I can find a way to make them better. Maybe add some symbols around here to say what the actual device is doing. The slots may help it strain. I would also make this a screw thread. These are the products I'm going to test. Salad blaster, kitchen wizard, super slicer, salsa master, safety can, can opener. Salad blaster. In front of me now is the salad blaster. This is designed to dress your salad with the push of a button. Let's see how effective it is. So, top unscrews, I think, yeah. This is a container for the salad dressing. There is a word saying press, which makes me think I should press it. And when I do, that salad dressing is gonna come blasting right out. And let's uh, load up some lettuce. Some vegan ranch with avocado oil. A little shaker salad cocktail. Okay, everyone stand back. I am about to press. Whoa, it popped right on. Let's give it more of a shake. It appears that I am ready to drink my salad. Let's see how the salad blaster compares to some Tupperware that you may already have at home. I think shaking up the salad was a little difficult because it's stacked and it didn't want to shake up as much. So I would give the salad blaster a four out of five. So typically I try this with my left hand and making it slippery to challenge myself a little bit on usability, but I'm kind of asking myself here why. So I'm gonna skip the left-handed oil test this time. I wasn't thrilled with the way this top pops off. It takes a little bit of work. I think in terms of usability on a one to five scale, I would give this a two. It's more of a salad dribbler. Let's talk about a redesign. And I'm not a big fan of the salad blaster, but that being said, I think we'll just give it a go. This part of it needs to be much more easy to clean. I would make this just a standard cylinder. We'll have a rather wide cylindrical uh, compartment for the salad dressing. I didn't like the pop action at all. So I would give this some thread so that you can screw this on and off. In terms of a buy rating for the salad blaster that wasn't that much of a blast, let's give it a one out of five. It actually has me a little bit bugging. 90s term. Kitchen wizard. This magical looking thing in front of me is the kitchen wizard. It does five things, and those five things are, you can use it to flip, serve, strain, serve. You can probably grab, serve again. They must have counted differently in the 90s. Maybe you can dry your socks on it. I wouldn't recommend that. I've got the makings here of an omelet. I have a couple of tasks I'm gonna have to do in making the omelet. All, in theory, can be done with the kitchen wizard. So let's give it a shot. And let's start beating those eggs. Let's grab some spinach, some mushrooms. Make sure it's grabbing the mushrooms the way I would want it to grab the mushrooms. Some cheese. Okay, let's uh, give it a flip. Now let's grab some ham. Two. Hmm, it's not quite getting under there for the ham, but I got it. Sound looks pretty good. Result-wise, we're okay. Question is, how much of that is the kitchen wizard? I'm something of a wizard at omelets myself, in my opinion. Let's see how the Kitchen Wizard compares to a spatula, whisk, and tongs that you may already have at home. Mm -hmm. 
Wow, the Kitchen Wizard version did taste much better. Psych. In terms of effectiveness, it's partly due to the shape of this. It's partly due to the shape of the handle. I will only give it a two out of five. I hope it doesn't cast a spell on me. Let's see how the Kitchen Wizard performs with a slippery left hand. With a slippery hand and a little less force in the hands, it's gonna be very hard to unclip this. I am noticing a little more by doing this left-handed. Well, broke the omelet a bit. This lock lever is rather difficult to use and it wouldn't get under something the way a spatula would get under. I would give this a one out of five. Let's think about a redesign. I would turn one half of this into a spatula or at least look at some way to make the front edge of this uh, sharper or tighter so it can get under some food. We can make it a slotted spatula. The slots may help it strain, which is one of the claims that it's given. I am not thrilled with this shape. These little ridges here are doing very little for me. So I would think about making this entire thing curvy, like I suggest with a lot of tools. I would do whatever possible to get rid of the fact that this is a pinch area and this can be a pinch area. Got a pinch point here and that pinch point is going to be right where this fatty part of your palm is going to ooze into that crevice and once you release it you're going to feel it. This won't open any further so you can't get in there with a brush or a tool. It's going to be impossible. You got to hope your dishwasher gets to it but even that is questionable. The way it is now, it is definitely in need of some improvement. Let's talk about a buy rating. What number does 1990 start with? Let me think. One. I would give it a one. Why? Because I don't think anyone should buy it. Kitchen wizard, eat my shorts. Super slicer. What I have in front of me are parts from the super slicer. It was developed some time ago by Charlie and Mike. And Charlie and Mike had a lot of ideas, apparently, because look at all the things it could possibly do. This is a spin wheel, and what's that gonna do is, I think, adjust the thickness of whatever you're slicing. And it also has this piece that you can use to hold the vegetable so that your fingers don't get too close to the blade. Charlie, Mike, give it a go. So we have small slices of carrot. What I have is a radish. That is working okay. Let's see if I can do it this way. Get my hand out of the mix here. And that's working okay. Let's see how the super slicer compares to a French mandolin. In terms of effectiveness, I would give the Super Slicer a two out of five. So it's a little too cheaply made. I didn't trust it. It was a little difficult to adjust. So two out of five. It is time for the very careful left-handed oil test. I am getting some radish chips, which is okay. They're thicker on one side, thin on the other side. I would rather, I think, have had thinner slices of radishes, but I don't think that was really possible. I think this is the next level setting. In terms of usability, I would give the Super Slicer a one out of five. I could possibly give it a two, but these things are just too dangerous to use. Let's chat about a redesign. I think I would give some sort of preference or indicator or something to denote that this is pointing to something. And as you go around, maybe add some symbols around here to say what the actual device is doing. I think I would give a little more shape to this part. I think by giving it an oval shape, I think you have a little more feel to this. I would make this a little more secure, probably make it bigger so that you have more chance of pushing this down. And I think this lip is meant to mesh in here to keep this in track. 
the chances of being on target are pretty low. The chances of being off center are pretty high. So I would make sure that as this comes down, we've got a shape here that is funneling this into place. As mentioned, this blade is pretty straight, as opposed to a blade that would look like this. And I think this cutting action would go a little smoother. In terms of a buy rating, the Super Slicer is getting a one out of five. It is just too dangerous of a kitchen gadget to fool around with something that's just not engineered or designed very well. Super Slicer, you are tripping if you think you're coming home with me. Salsa Master. In front of me here is the Salsa Master. Master, make salsa. It is designed to make salsa. This top will unscrew. It's got a three-bladed attachment, and it also has a mixing attachment. So I have some salsa-like stuff here. I have some tomatoes and cilantro. Now, this is at a gear ratio, meaning if I spin this once, the blades are gonna spin more than once. That puts me at a disadvantage in a way. This diameter is not a whole lot different than this diameter, which means I'm kind of doing three times the work. So let's try and see. This is, I guess, what I'm thinking. I'm gonna have to give this a couple of tries to get it going. I'm gonna squeeze this lime into this little cup-like thing. It is more finely chopped. I think that is starting to get acceptable. As you can see, we're talking about the 90s, but I'm gonna do something that Dylan did in the 60s. I'm going to go electric. For effectiveness, I would rate the Salsa Master two and a half. I don't think it deserves a three down the middle. I think it may have something to do with the shape of the blades that can use some improvement. Typically at this point, I would try my left hand, make my hand slippery and try it again. The shape of this knob is no problem. I don't think it's gonna slip out of your hands if it's slippery. So I'm going to skip the left-handed oil test. I would give Salsa Master a two out of five. Let's talk about a redesign of Salsa Master. Watch what happens if I don't use my left hand on it. As I come around, it's gonna tilt up that way. Maybe, and make it a little more stable in this direction. As I'm on top of this and I'm spinning, let's do that with that. Notice that the blades are spinning much faster than my handle's spinning. That's fine, because that's doing a whole lot of chopping. If you compare these straight blades that I have here in blue with the Cuisinart blades, it only has two blades. Notice the Cuisinart blades are shaped quite differently. These blades are curved. And I'm wondering if Cuisinart knows something. And maybe they do. They've been making these for a while. So I would learn what the shape of these blades are bringing to the party. I have a sense it would help. For a buy rating, I would give Salsa Master a two out of five. And that's only for people who live in a cabin with no electricity. You are truly the master of salsa. As if. Safety can, can opener. So I'm gonna be using the Safety Can Can Opener, the world's safest can opener, according to the box. This Safety Can Opener is a very early version of a side opening can opener. I'm gonna place it on the side of my split pea soup, and let's start twisting. What I'm gonna to try to do is back it off, and that does open it up. Mechanically, that worked pretty well. Let's see how the Safety Can Can Opener compares with a metal shearing can opening mechanism. Whoa. I am living a life of danger. Hold on a sec. Whoa, not completely off yet. Okay, I'm done. What you end up with, it actually does have a bit of a, uh, boy, a little bit of a pinch point here. In terms of effectiveness, I would give it a five out of five. It did what it promised. It separated the lid from the base of the can without leaving any sharp edges. I felt so safe while using it. It's time to try the safety can can opener using the left-handed oil test. Let's do that. I'm gonna favor my left hand and 
I'm gonna start spinning with my left hand. And I don't think it matters which direction I go. I'm gonna back it off because I learned that that's a way to release it. Now I'm just posed with the problem of getting the lid off. Oh, it popped right off. In terms of the way it functions mechanically, that's fine, but I think the weak point is actually this handle that you are spinning. Could give it a three, but let's be mean and let's give it a two out of five. You are old enough to take that sort of criticism in stride. Let's talk about a redesign for the safety can can opener. I have a couple of things I think would improve this. I would put some sort of graphic indicator here to say your can goes here. Instead of this fin, I would try maybe a three-sided shape or maybe even a soft four-sided shape. As you're spinning this, to get to the next position, you've got to go extreme that way. And now what do I do? I've got to come around to another extreme position. If the fin here, the spin portion, was something that would be easily grabbed from multiple positions instead of just two positions, that would be a lot more forgiving. In terms of a buy rating, I would give the safety can can opener a two out of five. Okay, three out of five. No, two out of five. Final answer. Well, it opened up a can of pea soup, okay? But can it open up a can of whoop -ass? Not sure. Here's one thing that you may have learned at this point from watching Well Equipped, that if you ever see a gadget with a name like Master or Super or Wizard in the title, be very, very suspicious.